Hey, what's up, everybody? BDO44 coming at you another video. All right, so sometimes your instincts tell you everything, all that you need to know. It's a therapy session real quick about a little experience. I wanted to document uh, nothing too strenuous or strange or strained in any way. It was just a really cool moment. So it's 420. Yeah, I know how BDF44 moves this wedding cake over here. Wedding cake, every that's the only weed I smoke. It's the only form of vice that I have in regards to anything that I would mess with my mind with. No liquor. I don't even like coffee. Like, <laughs> you ain't gonna see me drinking nothing. Uh, unless I'm out with a bunch of buddies, I might have a sip of something. But those days are over. All I don't experiment with no drugs, never snorted anything. None of that. Only thing I ever mess with is marijuana. I've tried a trillion strands <laughs> since I was 12 years old. And I've, I've boiled it down to one. So I know it's 420 probably be able to get it for half price off so i ordered it and they had like this double discount deal that you could get where they'll give you 30 percent off and then proceed to give you a 50 percent off deal so it's like almost like 80 percent off or whatever so i was like okay i can get my thing for half the price so i ordered it I'm like a long story story short there was some 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 strange uh connection in regards to how the discounts are supposed to be applied so basically I wasn't sure I was going to get the discount, but it was one of those situations where it's like, let me just order it. Everything I'm supposed to do on my end is legit. So when the person gets here, hopefully they'll apply the discounts. Well, when they got here, unfortunately, the discounts did not get applied, but I was able to uh, meet a really nice person. She was able to help me out and just listen to what I had to say. And of course, I'm going through a lot right now. And, you know, she was able to help me. I got her card here. Uh, so I'm gonna give her a call. She does like a wellness kind of, um, you know, health coach type stuff. And uh, I was telling her, I was like, look, I'm in one of the darkest spaces of my life. So I'm pretty sure anybody has any good word for me I need to be listening to. And since I wasn't able to get the weed, this wasn't empty. I was like, well, you know, this isn't an empty. I didn't waste my time speaking to you. This is something that I think was important because I was able to share with her what I'm going through right now in regards to my friend's um, bro passing away and then from there them um you know burying him right next to my mom so i thought that that was something that probably i just needed to get off my heart in regards to somebody next you know somebody in person since i don't see people at all these days but uh she she, she just so happens to provide sorts of like encouragement help and things of that nature type of stuff that i probably need people that point me in the right direction to get the help that i need since i'm doing literally everything by myself so that's really what it comes down to i'm just coming in to uh, any type of help or blessings that the Lord would provide me. And the, the, the instinct part of this was when I started ordering the weed, my <laughs> that voice in my head that I always tell you guys about, the, the same voice that prays to me, it told me, hey, you ain't gonna be able to get that weed. <laughs> that, that, that's not, that transaction's not gonna go through. I was told <laughs> spiritually that, that that transaction, you're not getting the weed, but we're gonna, I'm bringing someone to you. That's, it was almost like that, you ordered it is still within what it is that I want for you but like so in other words I knew to speak with that lady a certain way and I knew she would have something to give me other than my weed before I even went out there it's essentially what I'm telling you I thought it was a very small chance that my transaction would go through not because of the strangeness of the circumstance but because of what my conscience told me when I ordered it <laughs> It's not going to work, but that doesn't mean don't order it. And so I know I'm supposed to call this person and see what she has to offer me. And hopefully it can line up with some things that the Lord wants me to be a part of because I'm open to that at this point. Given the fact I'm going to be forced out of this house any damn way, I might as well have a destination and a bunch of stuff to do <clears throat> to fix myself. Um, it's going to take some things doing, doing some things differently. And so. I'm open. I'm open. That's what I'm essentially here to tell you guys. I'm open to a lot of different uh, things that maybe I wasn't open to before this morning. But at the end of the day, you know, you have to be. You have to be if you want things to change. You have to be if you want to be able to succeed. One of the things I was mad at myself about this morning, or not even say mad at myself, but one of the things that I was holding myself to task about is controlling what it is I can control based on the standards that I set for others. <laughs> based on the standards that I set for others. In other words, if I'm one of those people that say you have to be excellent, you got to step up, hit your free throws, all the different things I see in regards to basketball. If I'm not willing to do the 
what I'm supposed to do to whatever level that is, then I'm not living up to the standards that I hold up for other people. If I'm not being intellectually competitive in my nature and all these various different things that I say in my phrases, then I'm not doing my best. And so as I sit here and scream at coaches and players and organizational people about getting their lives together, I look in the mirror and I say, I give myself somewhat of a pass for not getting certain things together based on what it is I struggle with and based on what it is I accomplish while struggling, but not as it pertains to not fixing certain things that are within my control that would otherwise coerce me into better spaces. In other words, I do my channel. I do all this different stuff. I work out. I do all these different things to make myself feel as comfortable as I can be in this house, but I'm not doing anything that would otherwise put me in a position to not be in this house. And so these are things that I just know are behavioral and mental health stuff. And, you know, I've worked with, I've, I've been able to, I guess you can say stretch my wings within the confines of the space that I've confined myself in, as in being productive in this way. But all in all, if it doesn't create a foundation, there's no stability there and it is it isn't something that's going to last. So that's really what it comes down to is, is from this point on looking forward to building something that will last uh, to putting myself in a position to not necessarily need any help anymore, but to more so be the help that others may may request. So that's really what it comes down to, you know, on a day like today with with everything being as it is in my friend Kay's life, you know, I should probably make an appearance at the burial, if not only to just say pay my respects but to also pay my respects to my own mom you know what I mean and that's part of why I think it was important that I was able to get that out to someone today because I don't think I was actually able to verbalize that they were going to bury him today I don't think that that was something I said to the to the lady I got the card from but the reality is that's weighing on me double time because of not only a friend needs me but I ain't seen my mom you know, and so it's like I probably should be there, but I'm just not in a space. I don't have my vehicle. You know what I mean? It's a lot of different things that should otherwise be in place for me to comfortably just walk out the side and go. And unfortunately, I don't feel those things are in place at all. I ain't got nothing to wear to a funeral. <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff is like you would think that would be normal. But when you neglect just about everything like I have over the last two years, there's a lot of things that it should be normal that I just don't have. You know, like literally clothes and you know, making sure my bank account and all that good stuff is in order. All of this stuff has been neglected completely so that I can be in this isolation and this peace I've created for myself. And while it's been worth it to me, because it's helped me stay in the space that I'm comfortable with, it hasn't been worth it to my overall life because things have been neglected severely. And so, um, you know, <laughs> money was supposed to fix that, to be quite honest with you. Uh, the shares are supposed to balloon into a place where money is no longer a problem. And then from there, I'm supposed to be able to take care of all of these issues at once, financially. That's what I'm owed. That's what's due to me. That's what's on the up and up. Unfortunately, what my money's wrapped up in isn't on the up and up. As you guys well know, I'm an AMCA. And every coin I have is right in those shares as they continue to draw down um, from severe corruption. And ultimately, uh, people trying to eat away at an American company... Um, while while the pandemic was out and, and over leveraging themselves trying to do so just like they do with the other, the other company they do it with Blockbuster died that way Toys R Us died that way several other companies that you love very much died that way people like this applied their money to destroying those companies to nothing so that they could have tax cuts in doing so because if they didn't run it down to nothing they would have to pay taxes on it so running it to nothing is ultimately what it's about so when you put your money in something that they're attacking in this way that money's going to go down to nothing. So that's that's where my money's at, in the space that people are putting money in, in places where money's at to destroy companies. And so naturally your wealth is going to be deteriorated while it's in that vacuum. But there's a chance for a squeeze, as we all know. And so that's what I'm involved in. And I've been waiting for that squeeze to come save me from my struggles, my financial struggles, not necessarily my mental health struggles that I've de developed while being in this space. So the mental health struggles I have to get out of without any money and uh, I haven't asked anybody to help me because for the last time I asked somebody to help me, they did, and then I haven't talked to them since. So I'd imagine they don't want to talk to me, <laughs> and I don't blame them. But it's, it is what it is, man. This is, this is the life. If you follow these therapy sessions, none of this is news to you. You've been seeing the whole thing. I've been doing the videos all the time, of course, but every once in a while it's good to reflect and give people an update of where I'm at. And right now, I'm still dealing with it. But you know what I also know is that, you know, 
when I got to a point where I thought it would get this bad, I thought I would have already sold out by now to save my backside. I thought that my position would be gone to keep this from ever happening. But now that we're here and this is happening, with me being evicted and all these different things, as I pray in my heart to, to, to let go of my shares to save my backside, I say, um, no. <laughs> no. You see, I'm, I'm just as defiant as them on the other end. And I'd rather die than <laughs> give them a damn thing, naturally. Now, I'll save myself at the end of the day, but, um, you know, not, not without it getting a lot worse than it happens to be right now. And the reason that is is because I believe that strongly and not only in what it is I'm doing from an ethical standpoint, but how quickly money can come into the situation so long as I stay there and in the deterioration of everywhere else money would otherwise be. This is the safest place for your money. The entire country is being run into the ground by these same people. And so the only place that I know they're being attacked is right where I attack them as an AMC ape. And so that's really what it is. When you know why everything is screwed up and you know you're in the eye of the storm and nothing can touch you so long as you keep your psychological self centered in the understanding that as long as you don't move, you're fine. That's exactly what this is. That's exactly what it is. They can't do anything to the apes that they haven't already done. And we're still doing, still doing damage to them. So my inability to manage myself while this is happening has zero to do with whether or not I believe it's working. It's just whether or not I'll be able to benefit from it in time to handle what I need to handle in my life. This could take another five minutes. This could take another five years or maybe 50. But so long as this is in place, an entity of people who want to run these companies into the ground, ultimately over leveraging the country entirely because they can't manage their own greed, and people like myself who would rather die than allow them to do so, um, Squeeze is still on. BDL44, thank you all for watching.